Today, ladies and gentlemen, we embark on a new journey in a different Minecraft mod pack, and that mod pack is called the Fantasy Minecraft mod pack. Now, this mod pack is eerily similar to the last mod pack I did a guide for called Doncraft. Um, it has slightly over 30 more mods than Doncraft, and it, I think it sits at like around 280 total mods. So, obviously, this mod pack is quite PC intensive. If you guys did think Doncraft was PC intensive, this one will be up there as well. Now, I'm not going to lie, I even struggled to maintain a full 60 plus frames on certain areas of the map. I mean, hell, guys, like. The lag in the slow, like, chunk load unfortunately landed me in my own grave one time. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? However, other than that, uh, this mod is arguably, in my opinion, a bit better constructed than Doncraft. Now, the reasons for this I will be getting into uh, as the video goes on. So, upon first startup of a brand new world, you are given the option to make a selection on which type of character slash role you would like to play as. Now, there's a lot to choose from, with 22 different types of characters, not including the human option. Um, a few of these have their own special abilities as well as traits, uh, such as the Necromancer, for example, which essentially makes you homies with the pillagers and you are unable to trade with villagers and iron golems will even attack you on sight. You're not that guy, pal. Trust me. You're not that guy. Now, the Siren, on the other hand, has an issue with fire. So basically, any contact with flames will instantly kill you. So... Obviously, exploring the nether as this guy will probably boast quite the challenge if that's what you're up for. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I was kinda boring and I chose the human option to just kinda get a regular Minecraft experience, but anyway, as soon as you spawn in, you are given five books. Now, the first book is a starter guide, which will tell you pretty much the basic controls for combat, such as R for combat rolling, Z to zoom in with a spyglass, and K to enable or disable the shaders, which for some reason did not work for me, which might be a good thing. I mean, my PC might be feeling a little blessed right now. Now, as for the second book, it is called the Biomepedia. Now, basically what this does is it gives you information on several blocks and items, um, pretty much as well as different biomes. Now, some of these biomes look absolutely insane, as you guys can see as we just kind of scroll through the pages here. Now, a lot of the real different ones, I'm not going to lie, I think are pretty much going to be in the end and the nether. Moving on to the third book, so basically this is probably one of the biggest reasons why I believe that this mod pack has a winning over Doncraft. Um, so if you guys did play Doncraft, you are probably familiar with the hassle of having to track down villages and find guildmasters just to figure out where you are within the story. So basically, that is not the case on here. You don't have to do any of that. There is actually a quest book given to you right off the rip, so you can just kind of track these on the go no matter where you are. Super convenient, super helpful. And it's also really nice because as you can see, if you actually click in on the missions, it tells you exactly what you need to do. And there is even a reward system set in place for this as well. So completing missions obviously does pay off. And there's also um, other missions outside of the story mode missions on the left. There is a drop down menu, as you guys can see, and there's missions for pretty much like a whole lot of other things. Like there's missions for the nether, the end, uh, the mine cells dimension, the other side. Um, there is missions. There's just a lot of missions to do. All right. There's just a lot of missions to do. You are going to be busy with this mod pack for sure. Moving on to the fourth book here, this pretty much talks about all the different animals that you can tame within the world. So essentially all these animals work like horses do. Uh, you can use them as transportation. They have things in here like dragons, bats, uh, wolves. I even saw wolves in there too. Um, so yeah, you guys can kind of use these guys as transportation from around the world. I'm not too sure if the dragons are like quicker than Elytra's. I'm not 100% on that. But overall, they are pretty easy to uh, use to get around the map with because obviously they fly and stuff like that. So um, pretty convenient to use to maneuver the map. Now there is something in here that talks about a summoning staff. Now the summoning staff, to my knowledge, works exactly like the um, Elden Ring Spectral Steed Whistle. You just kind of like click this button or whatever, or like you pull out the summoning staff and you use it, and the 
tamed animal that you have it should kind of just spawn right by you now apparently there's a radius on this uh, apparently it can't be too far away from you i'm not 100 percent sure how too far is but there is a limit so definitely keep that in mind now another thing that i do want to talk about is you guys know how it is right you guys build a you know a house for your dog or something and it kind of just sits there it's kind of just more of an aesthetic thing um, the dog doesn't really use the house, right? You kind of got to awkwardly push the dog into the house in order for him to be inside of the house. So he doesn't really just go there willingly. Now, the tamed animals on here actually will. So they will they will essentially just kind of wander around uh, the area that you dismounted them on. So basically, it says that you can build them a house. Uh, it needs to be a 16 by 16 vertical block. And it says that you want to protect it from like the different elements of the world. So I'm guessing that like refers to like rain and stuff, which I'm not 100% sure if that matters. But yes, the houses for the tamed animals can actually have a use now. And last but not least, we have the final book, which is called the Book of Shadows. Now, this book is pretty handy. It's pretty convenient. Uh, it gives you the rundown of items and how to craft them and where to find certain items such as like trees and how to get certain wood, uh, you know, things like that. Now, some of these items, as you can see, are locked and I believe some of these become unlocked the more you progress uh, throughout the story uh, and the mod and, you know, things like that. Now, one thing that I do want to mention is that it should always spawn you right by a village, at least... I, I started two new worlds and it put me right in front of a village. So you should, I think, spawn by a village every single time. Um, I'm not 100% sure if there is a criminal system implemented like Doncraft, because I know in Doncraft, you obviously, I kind of learned it the hard way, you could not steal from their chest because there is some type of system set in stone where that will pretty much make them hate you. So on here, I, I don't believe that is an issue. However, um, if you do take anything from chess and villages definitely be careful because i know when i streamed this i got a weird prompt and it was slightly concerning like i don't know if i'm supposed to take this i'm gonna take it dude whatever bro if they hate me i'm sorry bro but we're taking this stuff now the next thing i want to talk about are skills which i think is done very well within this mod um, skill points are pretty much obtained, at least from my experience, by completing missions and just pretty much obtaining regular uh, experience. Now, there's a lot to level up, such as health, which will uh, pretty much just increase your number of hearts. There's even attack increases, stamina. Um, you can even get discounts on trades and a whole lot more. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and hover over them separately so you can see what each one does. Now, moving on to one of the first things that I would highly recommend doing, and that is just pretty much looting around. So, potentially finding um, a lot of good items to just kind of get you started. Now, I say this carefully. Don't get too curious and end up in a building that will end up resulting in your inevitable death. We need to... No! Oh my god. There is no way. Now, I would also highly recommend completing those story mode missions first, um, obtaining a ton of skill points to get stronger and quicker, then I would recommend mining as much verglass ore as possible. Now, I say this because when I did this on stream, it is like exponentially stronger than diamonds. I don't know if it's stronger than netherite. I'm not 100% sure, but it's very, very strong ore. Yeah, it's relatively easy to find as well. It kind of looks like diamonds, but it's not. It does kind of have a blue uh, sort of hue to it. Um, but definitely find these, craft some swords, craft some uh, tools, and definitely get a full set of armor on this, and you guys are set.
Now, this game does offer waystones just like Doncraft does, as well as dungeons and a ton of other crazy structures that are generated throughout the overworld. Now, there are things from like floating villages to castles, even villages underground, uh, sort of like bunkers. Now, they even have pyramids, which I would highly suggest avoiding until you get some good items because I unfortunately had to learn this through trial and error. Oh my god. <gasps> Yo, homie was waiting. Oh my god, dude. If this guy pieces me up, I'm done. <gasps> Bro, how many of these guys are in here, man? Oh my god. Okay, we're not going to go back in there. Not right now, at least. Let me put On the brighter side of things, though, these structures are pretty neat to explore and offer some great rewards if you get through all of the enemies that they hold. Now, some even include boss fights, um, which obviously the rewards are a lot greater, and um, some would even drop the Eyes of Ender that you are going to need for the end portal. Now, another thing that I would like to mention is that if you do find a cool structure, you could always base up in these. You could have like a base on like a floating castle or a village. I did have the idea of doing this myself, actually. Now, in some of these villages, they may have a portal. Now, this portal is called the Mind Cells Portal, and it's a very different looking portal. Uh, it's more circular shaped, and it kind of gives off this like ritual looking feel to it. Now, how do you turn this thing on? Well, it's very simple, actually. All you need are diamonds in your inventory. That's it. I don't know if you need like one or just like multiple. I'm not too sure. I think you only need one. Um, but once you have diamonds in your inventory, you will see this thing light up. And then once it lights up, you can go through it and uh, go over to the Mind Cells Dimension. Now, keep in mind, the Mind Cells Dimension is not anything spectacular. It's uh, relatively small. Um, there is a lot of loot in there, though, so definitely check it out. Since we are on the topic of dimensions, I want to actually discuss the other dimensions that are included within this mod pack, and that includes the Aether and the Other Side Dimension. Now, the Other Side is located in an ancient city. In fact, it's actually that massive portal. Yeah, the thing that Mojang has yet still to incorporate. Well, luckily enough, this mod will actually let us use it. All you'll need is a Warden's Key, which is dropped from the Warden upon death, and it will open this said portal to the other side. At least that's what the wiki said, so don't quote me on that. Now, the Aether is pretty easy to get to as well as the Mind Cells. You just need to create a basic Nether Frame portal with Glowstone instead of Obsidian, and you'll need to use a Water Bucket to ignite the portal. After this is all said and done, you'll be on your way to the Aether. There are supposedly three bosses and dungeons in this dimension. However, I traveled quite far and still have yet to discover anything, so I'm not 100% sure on that. If you do manage to find anything, definitely let us know in the comments. Now, one more thing that I do really want to talk about are the eyes you need for the end portal. Now, these eyes are just like the ones we've seen in Dawncraft. In fact, they actually come from the same exact mod. Now, to obtain these eyes, I'm pretty sure it's the same exact way as Dawncraft. You just kind of find them laying around in certain chests, kind of like I did, or you get them from uh, killing bosses, and some of them you may even have to craft with some rare items. Now, obviously, to obtain these eyes and the parts you need for the eyes, it's going to take a ton of time and a lot of exploring to do, as well as boss fighting. Uh, mission completions, etc. It's going to definitely take a long time to obtain all of these items and the Eyes of Ender. Overall though, this pretty much does wrap up the video. I just kind of wanted to come on here and go over a few basic things to get your journey going uh, with the Fantasy Minecraft mod pack. Now, we did talk about the portals, uh, various structures. We even covered the skills as well as how to track and access quests, which is seemingly easier in this mod pack. Honestly though, at the end of the day, if you do follow your quest book and keep it handy, 
uh, you'll have no issue progressing within this mod pack. Now, if you do have any further questions, please pop them in the comments and either myself or someone who is familiar with the mod will probably help you out. Overall though, pretty fantastic mod pack. If your PC can actually handle this monster, I'd highly recommend diving into the world of fantasy Minecraft and checking it out.